Our next speaker is Mike Kirby, who is the Scottish Secretary of Unison. Mike. Uh, Derek, thank you very much, and I'm very pleased to be bringing you greetings from Unison Scotland, because uh, our public services, the jobs, the wages and the pensions of our members are under an unprecedented assault due to the so-called austerity measures of the Westminster government. The October and March demonstrations and protests in Edinburgh, in London and in Belfast, together with the growing anger in the communities, the campaigning around trade union councils and community groups are testing the mandate for these measures. A mandate for illegal measures, unlawful measures in some instances, an attack on the welfare state and the welfare systems which generations over the last 50 years since the Second World War have strived to build. One thing is clear about the condemned government's plans for the next four years. Hundreds of thousands of workers providing vital public services in health, social care, education, social security and the tax system are going to lose their jobs and the communities are going to lose vital services. In Scotland, 60,000 public sector jobs will go. Not what I say, not what my union says, but what the Scottish Government and their own independent budget review group has said. But independent analysts have forecast 95,000 jobs are going to go. One in three, three percent of the workforce. And these are not statistics, these are people, these are young workers, they're women, they're families, and they're going to be hit by what's to come. And in the public sector, for every one job that will go, we know that another job will go in the private sector because of the investment which public services put into local communities. And the reality for public service workers and their families will be revealed bit by bit over the coming months as governments, councils, hospitals, schools, the police fire service enact their decisions. But we ask, why should the jobs and services go if the need still exists? And nothing is inevitable about these cuts. Nothing is inevitable, of course. They don't make economic sense unless you're a Tory who's determined to dismantle what they don't need and what they do not rely upon. And we know that previous governments, when faced with financial difficulties, have built their way out of so-called economic crisis. And that can be done again. But the real attack we're addressing today is on our pensions. A double, double whammy. To pay more, receive less, work longer, and for doctored inflation rates in terms of updating our pensions. We're going to pay more, a 3% increase, 50% additional levy, not going into our pension pots, but going into the treasury pot to pay for the activities of the delinquent bankers. And as our members face redundancy, a two-year pay freeze, inflation at 5%, gas bills rocketing by 20%, and a fear and a care for where our elderly are going to be living in the future, that we face a raid on our pensions. In local government, we signed a deal in Scotland in 2009 and we expect the Scottish Government to honour that deal that we stuck with them two years ago. In health, the ink is not yet dry on what's called an options challenge for our people in the health service that was again negotiated by government, and we expect them to stick to that negotiated settlement. But as pension costs are being reduced to pave the way for further privatisations, They'll force up pension costs to individual workers, force them out of schemes, and that'll have three results. It'll mean higher national insurance contributions for employers. It'll reduce the massive investment costs that exist within local government pension schemes. And it'll mean that as people no longer provide for life after work, they'll fall back on the state. Now, none of that makes economic sense. This is another financial racket, another mis-selling of pensions, and a robbery on a scale of the Maxwell frauds years ago. But finally, the truth is out, and it came from the mouth 
of Mervyn King, the Governor of the Bank of England, who in evidence to a parliamentary committee said, and I quote, the price of this financial crisis has been borne by people who absolutely did not cause it. Now is the period when the cost is being paid. I'm surprised that the degree of public anger has not been greater than it is. Your evidence of that growing anger. Finally, let me say, today is evidence of that fight. Together, we fight for pensioners, we fight for current scheme members, and we fight for the future generations who want the kind of pension benefits that we want. And as from Unison, we applaud those who've taken industrial action today. Unison is on the same road to ballot our members later this year. The job of the trade unions is to provide hope in the face of uncertainty. The unity of those represented here today will see us through. And the tipping point for industrial action in various places could be the attacks on our jobs, the attacks on our pensions, and the attacks on our services. But term one of this government will see the attacks on public services. Be in no doubt that term two will see the sell-off of the interests in the banks to pay further for what the mistakes that we did not create. Part of your elbow. We'll see you on future picket lines. Thank you.